I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. There were millions of individual computer commands needed to land the lunar excursion module on the moon on July 20th, 1969. The first command was given by President Kennedy on May 25, 1961 before a joint session of Congress. In order to successfully make that promise happen, countless computers did the work at the behest of thousands of men. One of those computers was on board the LEM. That computer was very rudimentary by today's standards. The astronaut would manually punch in noun-verb combinations resulting in codes. There were set programs. In the final descent, three of those programs were Program 63, Program 64, and Program 66. Program 63 was the approach phase, which executed a thrust sequence at 10% of throttle and slowed the vehicle down while it descended windows down and feet up. Program 64 turned the limb around feet first and windows up in the final descent phase, or initial power descent. At 12 minutes from touchdown, when the Eagle was about 33,000 feet away from landing, a noun verb display on the LEM computer showed a 1202 alarm. This was an unfamiliar command to Armstrong and Aldrin. 1202, 1202 alarm. 1202, stand by. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Armstrong belied obvious concern which astronauts generally do not display. On the ground, CBS's Walter Cronkite, off camera but on audio, says to Wally Schirra, the commander of Apollo 7 and one of the original seven Mercury astronauts, says with concern. What's this alarm, Wally? It's a, a go a case that you just apparently Houston, some Delta, 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 Delta. function uh, that's coming up on the computer is a verb. Delta looking good now. Roger, Delta X is looking good to us. A verb noun combination, no problem as I see. Neil Armstrong didn't know that as ground controllers looked at each other for the 1202 code in their mission books. A NASA computer engineer named Jack Garman was tasked prior to the mission to identify every possible computer alarm. He would communicate with MIT computer scientists constantly translating those alarms. His boss, Steve Bales, had aborted many simulations with these same alarms. But Garman had them memorized and he was able to instantly answer that the alarms weren't a problem. Alarm, you're meaning they're on the spot. Huh? Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same time, we're go. Armstrong shifts to program 66 to manually land the ship because he sees massive car-sized boulders on the site. He has 60 seconds of fuel left, and they're 500 feet above the surface. Armstrong didn't have time to hear that the alarm was an executive overflow alarm, nor did he have time to question mission control. The computer also had five other different alarms go off. He was focused on not crashing into the boulder fields. Mission Control Flight Director Gene Kranz instructs controllers to remain silent and to only call out remaining fuel time. They are 70 feet high, with 30 seconds of fuel left. Forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Armstrong and Aldrin are 27 feet from the surface. The lunar lander can tolerate a drop of a dozen or so feet at 6 miles per hour. The LEM slowly settles down, safely past the boulder field. The first words actually spoken on the lunar surface were Aldrin's, and they were not remotely romantic or poetic. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, boat auto, descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. We're home. <laughs> 413 is in. Man on the moon. We copy you down, Eagle. First in, uh... Oh, jeez. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. 